Hey, let's consider Zechariah chapter 8, verses 6 to 8 today. Thus says the Lord of hosts, If it is marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, will it also be marvelous in my eyes, says the Lord of hosts? Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the land of the east and from the land of the west. I will bring them back, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and righteousness. If these pictures that God shows Zachariah now, if they seem wildly optimistic to us now, I wonder how they must have seemed to him. Why is it taking so long? Why doesn't God just snap his fingers and finish this thing? Why? Is, you know, he's waiting on us because freedom takes time. Liberty takes time. The devil, he's an oppressor and he can use force and he's not trying to build anything. But God is, is trying to build something. God is going to create a universe of free beings, forever free, and I mean forever like, you know, billions and trillions of years out, forever free, free to exercise our will and rebellion or obedience, free like that, and yet we will never, the thousands upon thousands, the millions upon millions of us who are in the kingdom will never choose rebellion again. This, this is this conflict between good and evil, it's happening now, but in, in all eternity. So God is taking time a few thousand years today, and he's going to take us to an eternity of, of liberty, an eternity of goodness, an eternity of truth. And that's worth taking a little bit of time. God is creating a universe filled with free, intelligent, unselfish creatures, and it's worth the wait. Have you ever been at a place where someone was preparing a meal? And you could smell it. It was just smelled like it's going to be delicious. And, but it took a little bit of time and you had to wait. That's kind of, kind of a little bit of a picture of what's happening today. There's something really beautiful coming up. And in the Bible, we get to smell it. So he says he's going to save his people from the east and from the land of the west. From the land of the east and the land of the west. What do you have in the east? Well, from, from the standpoint of Israel, you have Babylon. Babylon represents false religion. It represents Satan's kind of compromise plan. Satan, he recognizes that we are designed as a worshiping being. He recognizes that. And so he tries to give us things that were kind of half in and half out. There's a recognition we've got to worship something. And so Babylon is the idea of worshiping something, but blending it with the worship of self, which of course really is, is homage to Satan. It is sort of a recognition that, yeah, there is a worshiping peace. And so Babylonian religion is false. It is that blending that's part true, that's what gives it strength, and part false, that's what makes it destructive. Babylonian, that's the religion of the East. But then we have the, we're saved from the land of the East and the land of the West. Well, what's West? What's West of God's people? Well, Egypt is West of God's people. And Egypt in the Bible represents the world or worldliness. Egypt represents kind of like a purer atheism. It's like Pharaoh, when Pharaoh says, well, who is the Lord God that I should listen to him? That is the full self. I'm going to rule everything. Everything's going to be under me. It's the full picture. There is no God or gods. We are gods. That's what Egypt represents, the land of the West. Now, Egypt had its religious pieces, but we're looking at what they represent in the scriptures. So God's going to save his people from the land of the West and the land of the East. We can't be halfway and we can't be entirely opposed to him. We need to be entirely for him. So that's really the only position that's, that's viable is that our hearts, that we would worship God with our whole heart and mind and strength. See, that's the vision God has for us. That's what we were designed for. We won't be fulfilled until we do that. So God has hope for us today as he... He's got a plan to get us out of these traps. We're going to be delivered from the land of the east, and we're going to be delivered from the land of the west. And God will bring us home. We need to walk out from the ex in the exodus, and we need to walk out in the exile. We need to get out from false religion. We need to get out from worldliness, of course, you know, this all absence of religion. And we need to come to that place where really we see everything in the way that God designed it to be. We... We are the creatures. He is the creator. We are made in his image. And so our whole life is a picture of doing things God's way. Mm -hmm.